Good morning. My name is Nikki Mathis. I am rector of St. Gregory the Great Episcopal Church in wonderful Athens, Georgia. We are so glad to have you worshiping with us. If you are a member of, the, of our parish family or a friend of our parish family, welcome. If you are a visitor with us this morning, again, welcome. We are honored to have all of you here worshiping with us this morning. And if you are looking for a church home, welcome home. Our bulletin can be found on our website. That is stgregoryathens.org. That's S-T. You don't spell out the whole saint. St. Gregory Athens.org. It can also be found if you're joining us below in the chat. So please know that you can find that um, there so you can follow along with us in worship. Also on the first page, the very first page on the inside cover of that bulletin, you will notice a short article on spiritual communion. Because so many of us are unable to gather for communion in this time of COVID-19, please know that just because we are physically unable to gather, that does not mean you cannot receive the benefits of communion, and that is called spiritual communion. All that's required is that you want to receive spiritual communion and that you are worshiping together in a community that is celebrating communion. And so with that, please know that at communion time, you can pray any one of the three prayers made available to you in the bulletin. We will be praying one of those out loud for the benefit of all. But please know that once that prayer is prayed, you have received all the benefits that anybody else also receives upon receiving communion. I also want to let you know that if it is your habit and part of your spiritual practice to give during, during the service of worship, that that is also still available, that you can give online at our website. Again, that is stgregoryathens.org. Or if you are a parish member and you have the Realm app on any of your devices, you can do so through there. The offering time is a fine time to do that. That's when most of us, when we were able to gather, were able to give. And also during this time of hardship and economic downturn, if you are unable to give, please know that that is perfectly fine because God loves us absolutely 100% completely from our head to our toes, whether we are able to give or not give. Also want to let you know that some of us in this parish are doing a spiritual practice with the creed. We are declaring the creed. Since we are not able to be together and recite the creed, in the way that is normal to us. We are hoping and inviting that people will feel free to in their homes and in their individual places of worship as you follow along with our service to declare those things that are especially important to you in the creed. And then just begin to see how that affects your thoughts, your emotions, your spiritual growth as you develop at least a three or four week practice of declaring the creed. It's not, of course, not something anyone has to do, but we invite you to, if you'd like to try this new spiritual practice that's fairly easy to add during this time when so many of us are overwhelmed or feeling understandably troubled during this troubled time. With that, I would love to invite you to worship. Our service of worship begins with hymn number seven. It is in our bulletin. The opening hymn is hymn number seven. It can also be found in the 1982 hymnal. Let us worship together. Welcome home.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 4, 
continuing with 12 through 16. It should be spoken by all of us in unison. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of the forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and at the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff, and the waters gushed out like rivers. Our second reading this morning is from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you, that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for God's own pleasure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, source of all good things, we ask that you would be present in this moment and to help us feel and see and know your presence. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. It's such a delight to be able to be with you all this morning. And for my sermon, I, I just want to begin with a story. When I was in college several years ago, I went on foreign study to Southern Africa with a group of about 21 students from my college. We toured around the country, visited even Swaziland, a smaller country within South Africa. It was an incredible trip and one day we stopped at a national park. We were there for respite for two days and like I think many 20-somethings, we got a bit antsy and we decided that we wanted to go on a hike. We looked at the map and when we looked at the map, we realized that just over the ridge, there would be another country and we didn't have a visa for that country. It wasn't on the itinerary for us to go there. So we, in our, you know, 19 year old wisdom, decided to hike into that country. The journey itself was actually quite beautiful. It was all pretty much uphill, but it was gorgeous. The day was amazing and we had a great time the first two, three, four hours. But when we got to that fifth hour, we suddenly realized that we had a problem we still hadn't reached the top of the ridge. We still weren't in that new country. And we were quite a ways away from camp, from base camp. And we didn't have enough water. We'd packed an algae or two, that's, but we didn't have enough water for what likely was going to be a 10-hour trek, round trip. And so we began to panic and wondering, what do we do? Um, and, you know, ironically, there was a stream that was flowing right beside us, but we knew we were very well educated on hiking etiquette. And we knew that if we drank the water from that stream, it would make us sick. And so despite that water being there, we didn't drink it. Instead, we began to make the climb down and we actually sent a few people ahead of us, some of the more quick, the faster, more agile hikers. We sent them ahead to base camp to get us some help. By that time, I had friends who were feeling fatigued and really struggling. And so they went to base camp to get us some help. 
As we were making our way down the mountain an hour or so later, we heard a call across the canyon. We couldn't quite make it out, but we, we heard it. We could tell that there were people yelling for us. And as we got a little further down and they got a little closer to us, we began to hear someone saying, drink the water. And I remember looking at my best friend on that trip and saying, we can't drink this water. And so we just kept pressing on down the mountain and the camp ranger was getting closer to us. And every five minutes or so he would yell, drink the water, drink the water. But we knew better. We, we knew better than to drink water just flowing down a stream in the middle of South Africa that had not been purified. And so we very weakly made our way down closer and closer to base camp when finally we were intercepted by the camp ranger. He had water with him, bottled water, filtered water that we were used to. And he looked at us and he just said, friends, just drink the water. You could have just drank the water. And we tried to explain to him and all of our, you know, goodness and awareness of how microbes worked in water that we couldn't do it. And he just looked at us and he said, friends, this is the water we serve at dinner every night. You've been drinking this water. In Exodus, we find a people in a wilderness, wandering around and they are thirsty. They can't find any water and so they are angry with Moses for bringing them out into the wilderness, to taking them to a place where they are thirsty and where they are just absolutely struggling. And so they complain to Moses, please, why did you bring us here? At least we had water back in Egypt. And so Moses, hearing their complaints, he goes and he cries out to God and God gives him some instructions. God says to Moses, take your staff and go and strike this rock. And so Moses, taking his staff like a divining rod, goes out and he finds that rock and he strikes the rock. And water springs forth. I'm sure that the people were relieved and they rejoiced. But the reality is that water, that water that he struck, it was there. It was already there. He just had to strike it. He just had to look for it. It was there. It, it didn't quite look like the way they expected the water to look. I think it probably wasn't in the places that they normally looked for water to come from, but the water was there. So what am I trying to say? You see, friends, we are living in a time and in a place where we are thirsty. We are thirsty for justice. We are thirsty for healing. We are thirsty for goodness and righteousness. And what we learn from today's story in Exodus is that the water is here. God has made provision for us. Justice is possible. We are walking right alongside the stream, but for some reason we believe that we can't drink from the water of justice, but it's here. For some reason we believe that we cannot partake in the waters of goodness and righteousness, but it's here. My friends, we serve a God who has promised us to provide provision. That day by day, God will offer us all that we need. But it often doesn't look like what we expect it to look like. And so my prayer for you, my prayer for me, and for all of us is that we would have our eyes transformed to see in new ways the way that God has made provision for us. To look to the stranger. To look to the person who you typically don't speak to. 
to imagine a new world that for many felt unimaginable. Friends, that's the invitation this day is that through the power of the Holy Spirit that we would have the courage to drink from the water, the waters of justice that are ever flowing, the streams that run down like righteousness. Friends, the provision has been made. I know we are in a wilderness and we feel alone and sometimes we feel so thirsty that we wish, we just wish we could go back to old times, but that's not happening, friends. Instead, we are here. And here is the place where we turn to God. And just as Moses did, we cry out to God, please help us. Help us see your provision. Help us see the water because we know it's here. Amen. We respond as we declare the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning may be found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer and in the online bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, especially Michael, Rob, Paul, and Don, and all priests and deacons, especially Nikki and Christina, for the clergy and people of St. Michael and All Angels, Stone Mountain, for all congregations seeking new or renewed direction, for the bishop and people of our companion and partner diocese of Cape Coast that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for our President Donald, our Governor Brian, and our Mayor Kelly, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially John Marlowe, brother of Julia Marlowe, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. 
let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray especially for Mac, Catherine, Christy, Katie, Marge, Karen, Jan, Steve, Carlos, Evelyn, Dot, Carol, Elena, Ben, Doug, Glenn, Carolyn, JTQ, Pat, Stephanie, Roseanne, Aaron, Fritz, Stephen, Linda, Rosina, Alice, George, Patricia, Tina, Catherine, Connolly, Deborah, Mary, Gail, Kim, Kevin and family, Shirley, Jimmy, Jean, Sandy, Shelby, Sarah, Roger, Martha, Jack, Stanley, Tammy, Cecil, Bill, Sally, Patrick, Harold, Diane, Ken, Anna, Faye, Neil, Anne, Paula, John, Gwen, Barbara, Dusty, Daniel, Heather, Matt, Pete, Sophia, Jill, Samantha, Jennifer, Chip, and Buddy. Our men and women in the armed forces, especially Patrick, Christopher, Gabrielle, Nathan, Tom, James, and Jonathan. I invite your prayers. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give special thanks for Don Muskolt, Chris Branham, Crystal Hancock, Cecil Hudson, Zachary Jarrett, Wynn Walter, Brad Hankins, Nikki Mathis, Cleo Weinmeister, Mark Tavenier, Sarah Gordon, and Mia Kamostin, who celebrate their birthdays this week and for Anthony and Maddie Barktoll, Jeff and Paula Sanford, and Kevin and Angela Green, who celebrate their anniversaries this week. I invite your thanksgivings. O oh God, on whom we cast all our care, May those of us who are merely inconvenienced remember those of us whose lives are at stake. May those of us who have no risk factors remember those of us who are most vulnerable. May those of us who have the luxury of working from home remember those of us who must choose between preserving our health or making our rent. May those of us who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those children who will go hungry with no school meals. May those of us who have to cancel our trips, remember those of us with no place to go. May those of us who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the market, remember those of us who have no margin at all. May those of us who are one of the many friends and family touched by the 200,000 deaths in this country be remembered by those of us who have retained our health and our families and friends intact. May those of us who settle in for quarantine at home remember those of us who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, whose arms of love embrace us all. Amen.
Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon those of us in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as our constant companions. Have mercy on us. Help those of us who have more power and ability to eliminate cruelty to any of these, our neighbors. Strengthen those of us who spend our lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As our Bishop Bishop Wright says, because of what Christ has done for us, we now have peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace is possible with our neighbors. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Please take this time to offer peace to all those living in your household. And also, if you're participating in the chat with us today, please take this time to offer peace in the chat. Peace be with you. Air hug. Hi, Mom. Our service will continue momentarily. Today is Mother Nikki's second anniversary as rector of our church. Remarkable your second year. We are so glad that you are here to lead us on, to help us cope, to comfort us, to renew hope. With love our God will make a way to bring us to a better day when we will not still have to wait to join our hands and celebrate. Woo, Nikki, two years. Congratulations. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to the Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the, in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to stand together as a family under God, and pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot physically consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and and ever-living God, God, we we thank thank you for for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood blood of your your Son, Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and and heirs heirs of your your eternal kingdom. kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work work you have given given us to do, do, to to love and serve serve you as faithful faithful witnesses of Christ Christ our Lord. To to him, to to you, and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, be honor and glory glory, now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you now and remain with you always. Our closing hymn is number 111 and lift every voice and sing. Our closing hymn is number 111 in Levis hymnal and also in your bulletin.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.